As President Obama nears the end of his final term, we examine what happened to his pledge to seek a world without nuclear weapons. Experts say that a new nuclear arms race is underway with the added danger from states like North Korea. We have an exclusive interview with Obama's former assistant defense secretary who warns that a new generation of weapons could make a nuclear conflict more likely. I'm Dana Lewis, and this is Insight. Welcome to Insight. In today's show, in President Obama's first foreign policy address, that was in 2009, he promised to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. But as his presidency draws to an end, experts are warning that we are entering a new nuclear arms race involving Russia, China, the U.S., and states like North Korea. The United States is set to spend $1 trillion on upgrading its massive arsenal of nuclear weapons. And Russia has just revealed what it calls a super nuke, the Satan II, which could reportedly destroy a country the size of France. We may no longer live in, a, in fear of global annihilation, but so long as nuclear weapons exist, we are not truly safe. During the Cold War, America and the Soviet Union went mad. That's mutually assured destruction. In a chilling east-west standoff, they adopted a strategy of destroying one another in a massive nuclear exchange to deter a nuclear launch. Different scenarios have been rehearsed and planned for. Here's a common one. A Russian nuclear submarine sneaks up under radar and close to America, launches up to 10 of its 150 kiloton warheads at U.S. cities. The U.S. president has less than 10 minutes, maybe only six or seven minutes, to decide whether to retaliate. And as he is being shuttled aboard Air Force One, he likely does so by launching hundreds of nuclear warheads at strategic Russian targets, including major cities. The Russians launch more missiles, and as depicted in the 1983 movie, The Day After, it's nuclear holocaust. And since the late 1960s, MAD has kept both sides from starting nuclear war. But things appear to be moving in the wrong direction. Andy Weber was President Obama's nuclear point man up until 2014 the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Nuclear, Chemical, and Biological Defense Programs. Andy, are we at the beginning of a new nuclear arms race? Well, I, I do think that we're at a, um, a tipping point where we could sort of sleepwalk into a, a new qualitative nuclear arms race. A lot of countries are um, modernizing their nuclear weapons forces. Some countries are pursuing new types of nuclear weapons. And if we don't have a uh, a redoubled effort to have some arms control to cap some of this effort. Uh, I do believe it could uh, it could take on a life of its own like we had uh, during the Cold War. The U.S. has decided to spend a trillion dollars over 30 years to update its aging nuclear triad. Triad means air, sea, and land. Bombers which carry nuclear weapons. Stealthy submarines designed to fire nuclear missiles at sea. And land-based nuclear missiles launched from silos. America's nuclear deterrence is the bedrock of our security and the highest priority mission of the Department of Defense. But what happened to President Obama's pledge when he came to office to eliminate nuclear weapons? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Western experts blame Russia for an environment breeding deteriorating arms control. The annexation of Crimea, Russian troops in Ukraine, Russia's recent deployment of nuclear-capable Iskander missiles to Kaliningrad bordering NATO countries Poland and Lithuania. And friction between America and Russia over Syria. And Weber says it is believed under Russian leader Vladimir Putin that Russian doctrine includes limited first strike of nuclear forces. The Russian Federation current doctrine does call for using 
nuclear weapons in a conventional scenario to show they're serious and what they call in a de-escalatory strike to get people to back down from a conventional war. And I think this doctrine is very, very dangerous. And we need to show restraint, be the mature nuclear weapon state, and not mimic this uh, inflammatory policy that is the current policy of the Russian Federation. Russia blames NATO expansion on its borders and specifically the American installed missile defense system. Recently, President Putin announced despite a nuclear treaty with the U.S. to reduce nuclear forces, quote, we will be forced to aim our armed forces at those territories from where the threat comes. More than 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles, able to overcome even the most technically advanced anti-missile defense systems, will be added to the makeup of the nuclear arsenal this year, he said. At the moment, uh, Russia has placed a question mark behind its commitment to a number of arms control agreements. One example is the Intermediate Nuclear Range Forces Treaty, which uh, limits Russian development of, of cruise missiles and other types um, in a specific range category. Now, Russia is believed to be actively developing a system precisely in that category, which the U.S. has said would violate the treaty. Um, it's also brought into question its commitment over strategic reductions and the New START Treaty in particular. Uh, and that's a really worrying development because what it speaks to is the fact that Russia may be relying more on nuclear weapons than it has previously, that its policy around nuclear weapons and nuclear use um, might, be, might be changing, and uh, that could spell some fairly significant concerns for strategic stability. There have been nuclear threats on both sides. Russia has regularly probed NATO defenses with bombers and warships. And last year, the U.S. sent a flight of four massive B-52 bombers on a flight up over the North Pole and North Sea, unarmed. But each bomber could have carried 20 nuclear cruise missiles, 80 missiles in total. A strong message to Putin. With tensions running so high, Weber has called for the U.S. to update its nuclear arsenal, but to do away with replacing nuclear cruise missiles, which he says could lead to an accidental nuclear exchange. You and many others now are campaigning against nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. Can you tell me why? The reason I believe nuclear-armed cruise missiles are so very dangerous is, is because they come in both conventional as well as nuclear variants. And if one is coming at your country from a nuclear weapons state, you have no way to discriminate, no way to know if it's carrying a nuclear warhead or not. And that could lead to a miscalculation, an accidental escalation. The other reason is they can be launched without warning. They're very difficult to defend against. Potentially, they could even be used in a first strike to take out another country's deterrent capability. The U.S. isn't the only one updating its nuclear arsenal. Britain will spend $31 billion on replacing its fleet of four Vanguard nuclear submarines which each carry 16 nuclear missiles and many more warheads. And other countries are spending too. All of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council who also possess nuclear weapons are going through uh, an arsenal modernization program. That applies to the US, Russia, China, uh, the UK, and France. Um, so it's not simply a development that's happening in the United States. However, um, from the perspective of threat mitigation, there's, there's a tension in that, in that modernization because some view it as an intention to keep nuclear weapons much longer into the future, um, potentially uh, working against the disarmament commitments that the U.S. has. But at the same time, from a threat mitigation perspective, making sure your delivery systems um, are not extremely outdated and therefore um, more risky, prone to fault, is also important. The Russia threat is one problem, North Korea another. Its seemingly unstable leader has threatened the U.S. with nuclear annihilation after successfully testing a hydrogen bomb. And nations like China are working towards developing smaller nuclear devices, 
even some American weapons have what's called dial a yield. Smaller nuclear blasts make for a more dangerous world. And these lower yield um, variants really do blur the line between uh, conventional weapons and nuclear weapons. And, and we've had this taboo for over 70 years since the United States used nuclear weapons in World War II to help end that war. I believe we should avoid these lower yield nuclear weapons, which um, are frankly would be tempting to use uh, early on in a conflict. Matt appears to have been replaced with the notion that nations could have a limited nuclear exchange. Incredibly, nuclear war becoming more likely, and perhaps not the unthinkable, unimaginable anymore. This is Insight. Coming up, a more dangerous world. We continue our focus on the new nuclear arms race with a former assistant chief of defense staff in the United Kingdom.